Okay. Thank you so much. I'm going to just introduce our judges, and each one will say a little something. Um, I guess we'll start with Chris Crenshaw. Here I am thinking I was going to be last. <laughs> oh, well, it's all right. <laughs> um, I must say, over these last couple of days, I really enjoyed all the bands that have come up and um, all your hard work has, you know, all your hard work has paid off. And um, I think everybody should take away from this festival, especially in these last two and a half years that we've had of not playing together, that anything could be taken away from you just like that. So um, and cherish these moments, cherish everything, cherish every moment that you all have together. You know, this, this, this is gonna be the last time that this particular 2021, 22 band is gonna play together. So, um, and you get to get another edition next year. And so, the way that you, the things that you can take away off the bandstand are these things, you know, just things that we always talk about that we take for granted, like attention to detail, um, dynamics, um, the eighth note triplet. Really, I mean, in the, in the swing fields, like the upbeats, the downbeats, all those little things that you could, um, always improve on and always work on. Even if you have to take, even if you have to, have to slow things down to, to get things right and then go further in the right direction. Sometimes you may have to stay, take a step back to go in the, in the right direction. And, that's a, and these are like life lessons that you're doing up here on these, on, in this bandstand. Really, really life lessons. So take the opportunity because you have more time than you think as youngsters. You really do. As you get old, life gets in the way, well, however way it's going to get in the way, but life gets in the way <laughs> of what you want to do. But right now is the time, just like Charlie Parker says, now is the time to get your stuff in order, to really work on what you want to work on. If, you, if it's going to be in jazz, if it's going to be in music, cool. If it's going to be in something else, cool. But Anything that you do up on this bandstand and in the rehearsal um, room that you're in, you always think ahead, always think forward, always take the time to get things together because you're going to need those things in life and you're some of the brightest, you're supposed to be some of the brightest students you are, <laughs> really. You are. You're supposed to be. You're supposed to be some of the brightest students in in your school or in your community because we use both sides of our brain. We. We do. Yeah, we do because we have a we have a, a literal side which is the left side and we have a creative side which is the right side. That's why sometimes when you finish rehearsal, you you your your brain is fried because. <laughs> You're using both sides constantly at the same time. So take those life lessons and, and that you do up on the bandstand and apply them to your life. And I think everything um, from this point on is gonna is gonna benefit. It's gonna be in your benefit. I don't have to introduce him, <laughs> Joe Lovano. <laughs> I'd just like to say how inspiring it was to hear everybody in these last few days. Some really amazing, inspired music. Um, the music that you were playing and interpreting and uh, feeding off of was written by some of the most inspired people ever in music, you know? And uh, they played and wrote these things with so much love. And I was feeling that from all the bands, uh, the passion and, and 
and how you were trying to let the piece of music give you inspiration and ideas. And that's the, one of the most important things, I think. You have to feed off each other and feed off the piece of music that you're playing to create your music within the music, you know? And uh, for me, that, it, that, that journey is something that you deal with your whole life. And uh, I remember when I was your age and exploring pieces of music and trying to internalize them and, uh, and listening and realizing that everyone that I listened to had uh, the passion and the love in their sound and approach that uh, captured me, you know? And that's still going on today, and I, I have to say that I was really captured being here these couple days, I'd like to thank Winton and everyone for inviting me to come and uh, participate. And uh, I learned a lot also, and I was really uh, feeling it from everybody, you know? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you all, thank you. And like, like Chris was saying, you know, to really pay attention to details, you know, as you're developing. So you, so you each uh, create an approach that becomes your sound, you know? Sound is, is, is about your approach in the music, in the rhythm, in your melodic rhythm, the harmonic rhythm, and how you put things together in those, uh, within those elements. And the deeper you get into that, you start to find yourself and um, play with a trust and an inner passion that drives you to practice and to play and to create just as a, a, as a player on your own. And then when you go to play with others, you, uh, come together in a special way, you know? And throughout your lifetime, your relationships that are starting now with the people you play with and play for just keep developing. And uh, those relationships are something really important, the way you treat each other and listen to each other and embrace each other. That's what makes this music so beautiful. So thank you, thank you. Hello. I enjoyed you so much. Um, I spend a lot of time performing with the Count Basie Orchestra. And um, it was so wonderful to sit and be on the other side watching you. I was hoping I'd, I'd get a chance to hear a few more of the singers that I saw on a photograph that were supposed to sing, but um, the two young ladies that I did hear, I enjoyed you. I want you to know I enjoyed you very much and that I want to give you my, you can clap, yes. <laughs> I see you. I want you to know that I enjoyed you very much and that I will find you after this and give you my card because I'd like both of you to contact me so we can do a couple of lessons, though they will be online. I know that's a drag, but uh, it's better than nothing. <laughs> so, what I also want to say to you is, I was so inspired by each of you when you got up to play and the, the level of confidence in your spirit that just shined with each solo. And what I really loved is how you supported one another. That is so beautiful, you know? It's really, really important that you know that nobody is like you. There's only one you and each of you are enough. You are enough. 
each and every one of you. And so to see you step up the way you did and just swing so hard, it brought so many memories um, for me when I first started singing. Um, because you have to be fearless when you get up there and play. And you always want to be yourself, no matter how many ideas you have borrowed from whoever you've been listening to, right? So it's like this big onion, and you are the center of the onion. And so all these ideas that you grasp and steal from everybody, which is a good thing, you're going to reach a point, and I'm thinking maybe when you're about 30. Now, Winton is the exception. He, he was born an old spirit and always played like that. He is definitely the exception to the rule, but... <laughs> People that came from this planet, and I say that in the most loving way, we borrow ideas. That's how we grow. That's how we come into our own. So once you have gotten all you can get from borrowing those ideas and stealing from whoever you've been listening to, after a while, after you've just sung it and practiced it and, and got the run and the riff down and everything, you peel that layer back. All those thin, thin onion layers. And of course, in the center of that is you. You don't need it anymore because you've created your own sound, your own wonderful sound. I just cannot say that enough. Um, wow, this was such a pleasure and an honor. And uh, I hope to see all of you on the road. <laughs> on the road, playing. Well, Chris and uh, Joe touched on this, but I'll bring it more to where we are right now in this space. The relationships that you make through this music and with this music can last a lifetime. Uh, John Clayton and I met when we were 19 years old, and we've been lifelong friends ever since. And we started a big band of our own, the Clayton Hamilton Jazz Orchestra in 1985, and we still can't afford it. But we started it, uh, and it's our, it's our voice of what the music sounds like. Joe Lovano and I were in Woody Herman's band together in 77, 1977. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are on the stage today, you know, how many years later, and just and we're, we're reuniting and still lying to each other about how good we were in the band. And, and, uh, and then Carmen and I were on the Basie Band together a few years after that. So all these relationships that you're building at a young age just keep you going and the people that you're related to through the music. You just, you just keep feeding off of each other as you did so well here the last couple of days. Um, I think what was surprising to me was how well everyone played together. I didn't expect everyone to be this tightly knit after doing a Zoom concert or being isolated in your room with headphones on. But it seemed like you were so happy to be able to play again as a group. We were happy to hear it. Everybody's happy. So I, I, think, I think that's what came out of the music most for me from all of you today. Uh, I would encourage you to knock the rust off of some of the things that happened during the pandemic and really expand your ears, your awareness to the people that you're playing with. There were certain times where I felt like we could have locked in a little better and listened to the people uh, that we're playing with a, a little more closely. So I think we have to maybe put our antenna out a little more and make that a better feel and get back to where we were. You're also a couple of years older, so it's time for you to be more aware because you're all too good. But you're not as good as, as uh, what you're going to be, and you're not aware of it right now. But you're really going to be something. So these are the best years musically. They're the best years of your life. I was, I was uh, the band captain of my high school band, and, and uh, I had the lead in Music Man as Professor Harold Hill. And, <laughs> 
Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a big deal. You know, oh, think my friends had any pool table I ever hoped they could beat with the gold trombone. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, so. Don't encourage me. <laughs> uh, so I went back for one of my class reunions, and just about everybody that was there from the band and the music program came up to me and said, I didn't realize it at the time, but those are the best years of my life. And they're not in music now. They're doing other things. But these are the best years of, of your life because you create these relationships in music. And no matter where you go from here in whatever avenue you choose, You'll take the discipline, focus, concentration, everything it takes to play this music as well as you do. You'll take it into that area and you'll expose others to what they need to get together in that field that you've chosen. So it does my heart good to see all of you perform so well and the fact that you all were so happy to be here for the right reasons, to play, to learn, to experience other bands, to listen to the great wisdom that has been offered you. And those are the right reasons to be here. So congratulations, and uh, I can't wait till next. I am here next year, aren't I? I just, no, no. Yeah. You keep your gig your way. I, no. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you all so much. Um, what can I say? We, we sit down and this is our 27th year. I can remember just to see everybody playing their music from memory. Everybody come up to microphones to play, wondering how you did, looking at your colleagues, working on your parts, feeling like you lifted everybody or you let everybody down all the kind of things you think about, about yourself. And what I love the most about this, this festival has been when the fact that the band sit and listen to other colleagues, and then when they hear people who can play, it's always a spirit of generosity and the depth of feeling that's genuine. It's one of the most important things to maintain throughout your life. You all are gonna come up in a time when computers are gonna really challenge people. AI, the robots, they're here. They're gonna do things that human beings cannot do. But the one thing that they can't do that human beings can do is be human beings. In this music, you're not gonna ever have an AI program to sound like a jazz band. Too many millions and thousands of human decisions and some that are stupid. <laughs> and it's important that those decisions be stupid and selfish and foolish and in those things is all the things that make us so lovable as people. It's not in being perfect. It's in doing your thing. So I just want to say that I'm so proud of everybody. Band directors, too. We had a dinner with all the band directors the night before. If you could have heard them talk and the way they talk about their students and the love they have for everyone and what you all have all gone through and the, the comments that they made, the clarity and the intelligence of them, it was a blueprint that anyone in this country could use what they were saying and it would correct a lot of what's wrong with us right now. It's really, it's, I want to say how much I also respect I have for our judges and, and the, pro the pr process that we go through. We mark down whatever our scores were. I know I'm getting soft because my scores were too high this year. <laughs> it's when I'm very emotional. I don't know why. I just everybody is a, is a, is a 10. <laughs> so my judging is unreliable. <laughs> and I need, I need Carmen to bring me back to earth. What she did. <laughs> it doesn't mean that she's too hard. It means that she's concerned about the quality 
and the style of the music it was refreshing to hear her the way she talked about things. <laughs> Chris also. They, they <laughs> Chris also, some stairs. But we come together with a consensus. One thing I want to say is art is not, a lot, of, a lot of stuff is opinion, what we think, what we heard at the moment. So in that way, I don't want people to ever feel like you won something or you lost. You notice how the absurdity of sports, some last second lucky kick and all of a sudden, all the pundits on the next day with their philosophy of why it happened. It happened because there was a lucky kick at the end of the game. Okay. We keep things moving. We keep things moving. To be a human being is to be part of a competition. Our species survives because of competition. But there's a festive aspect of it, and that's the most important part of it. And that's the communal part. And that's what, what allows us to embrace coming together and embrace the creativity of others. People's playing, their humor, things that they figure out, and allow us to not think we are the center of the universe. We are the center of our universe. But if you ever look at the universe, oof, this just keeps going. So my, my wish for this is that it continues to just go on and on with the feeling getting deeper, more profound, focused on meaning. The one thing about the music we heard is a lot of young people focused on something of meaning. The one thing that surprised me in the music that we play is Duke wrote music through the 60s into the 70s. We didn't hear a lot of that music of late uh, Duke Ellington music, which was kind of a shock. I love the music of all the periods, and it's always good to see Younger people learning things uh, of significance and not relegating it to time periods or to generations. If something was good, it is good. That's what the great Jimmy Heath used to always say. So I'm going to conclude what I'm saying by talking about the ceremony tonight. We're going to introduce all of the awards for outstanding soloists. And we went through every name of every person that soloed. We talked about every name. We, we compared our notes. We listened to what each other said. If you were left out, it doesn't mean you can't play. It means this is what we heard at that time. If you were included, it doesn't mean you can play. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with one story about, about my father. I can't help him. So I was 22 years old, I won Grammy Awards, which I didn't even know what a Grammy was. And my father came to the ceremony with my mother in Los Angeles. We were in the hotel room afterwards. I was getting ready to go out and have a good time somewhere. So my father was just kind of looking at me. He said, oh, that's, that's the Grammys, huh? It was so loud, most of the music. He was like, so I was like, yeah, man, you know the Grammys. So when I, before I left the room, he looked at me and said, you don't think that this means you can play, do you? And I looked at him and said, no, man. I heard y'all play too much. It didn't, he, didn't, he wasn't trying to throw water on it. He was trying to make me understand. Being able to play is not a popularity contest. You're 22. You have a long way to go, son. And he was right. So through our lives, we continue to work on what we're doing. When I heard the questions you all asked me the other day, and I think about this room, your aspirations and your dreams, Write your stuff down. So much can come out of this room. So many innovations. There's so many things we need to work on. Music may or may not be a part of what you do, but excellence will be a part of it if you wish to affect change. We need y'all because we need change. And we need you to look at things and come to stuff with meaning and an understanding and the humanity and depth that's in this music. Bring it to realizing whatever your dream may happen to be, because a lot of what you're thinking, believe me, is for real. Make it be real. And I'm sure I look forward, I hope I'm granted enough time out here to see what all of you are going to do, because I've been seeing so many great students for years coming out of this program. It's the single thing that I'm so absolutely proud of. And uh, do your thing. 
So these are the, the bands that I'm forced to announce by the judges. <laughs> Joe especially. And they're in no particular order. Foxborough High School. Orange County School of the Arts, Orange County School of the Arts. Osceola County School for the Arts. Okay, now, I don't, I want y'all to choke down being mad. Don't try to find reasons for it. We were all going back and forth and we did the best that we could do with the information we had. I want y'all to have a good dinner, be back for the concert at 7.30 p.m. We're gonna announce the awards after the concert. And now Megan is gonna come back and give you all some details on tonight. Thank you so much, it's a pleasure. I'm all the best.